Planetary Society. How long, how long has it been around? 31 years. We started in 1979-1980 uh, that winter by um, Carl Sagan, the very well-known, and then Bruce Murray who was the head of the Jet Propulsion Lab at the time, and Lou Friedman, who was an old NASA guy who did a lot, well, he, he worked at NASA as a young man. He's uh, an expert on solar sailing, and that's, that tradition is still with us. And so we, um, at the height of the Planetary Society, before uh, all this other, these other missions came to be, there were over 100,000 people. And so for the first time in, uh, depends how you reckon, let's call it 15 years, the planetary society is growing again. It's getting bigger. And it went down to 30 some thousand, now it's going on its way back up. So we're, people around the world just have an interest in space and we are proud to be part of that. Now, is it the reason that it's growing again? Is, that, is, is it organizational reasons or, or, or is it, uh, external reasons people are getting more interested in space again. Well, we always wonder about cause and effect at a nonprofit membership organization. But we think people are interested in space again. The canceling the space shuttle really raised awareness, not just in the United States, but people all over the world. And I remind us all, the space shuttle was canceled seven years ago. It was canceled during the previous president's administration. It just finally got wound down. And I think it's clear, or it seems as though, now there'll be funds freed up to do something new and cool that will inspire people. And uh, you always want to involve humans in space because it just tells a story like nothing else. Humans are the best explorers we know. And all the robots are made by humans, for crying out loud. So uh, it's, uh, it, I think we are in a golden age of planetary exploration and I hope a rebirth, or we're working for a rebirth in human exploration. What do you see about the current uh, the climate in regards to space that you don't particularly like? Well, I don't like the, I mean, I'm not a fan of the resources being put into this rocket system that will probably never be useful. And I say this, uh, not as a progressive or conservative or uh, for political, it's just the launch rate is so slow, even in the best of times, that it'll just get canceled. Politically, it's not sustainable. So that's heartbreaking. It's a lot of money. You go to Cape Canaveral, you see uh, the um, Constellation Gantry Tower, and that was another ill-fated rocket. Not that it wouldn't have worked or this and that, but it was not politically sustainable. And the politics of space are more difficult than the technical problems. You have to appreciate that. It has to be something people want to believe in for a long time. If there was one thing that you could do to bring the U.S. rank up, what would that be? Algebra. It turns out algebra is this indicator of whether or not a person uh, chooses a career in science or engineering. And it's a surprising thing, because I would have thought, based on research that led me to do the TV show, Bill Nye the Science Guy, I would have thought it's science education, especially elementary science education. But it turns out there's this huge connection between algebra and success. And it's not just success in science, it's your ability, apparently, to uh, form mental models or um, abstract to think abstractly about the world, about your environment, about other people, about space, about everything. And algebra is inexpensive to teach. We just need to do a better job of it. And apparently, just, I'm, not, I'm just getting started down this road, but apparently you just have to start earlier. Just expect students in elementary school to pick up a little, a symbol representing a number. Just start in on that early on and their lives will be changed. Their lives will be enriched. They'll be able to predict the future, and they will, we hope, become technically literate, scientifically literate, and change the world. So I'm working on it. I just remind you, we're at the Space Vision Conference, where you have students from all over the world who are self-organized into exploring space without the Cold War level of investment in rockets and stuff. 
It just shows you the, the enthusiasm that people have for space exploration. So what, we, what I'd like to do is support this. And so at the Planetary Society, where I'm now the CEO, uh, we are, we've started an education program because all of us of any age, people in their 80s, uh, got excited about it when we were less than 10, fewer than 10 Earth orbits. So we want the next generations, the next people coming, coming along to have that same opportunity. So we're working on it. 